If you're working a job that leaves you feeling burnt out at the end of the day, to the extent that you only have the mental capacity to lay in bed on scroll on your phone or binge watch Netflix, that's not a sign that you're flawed. That's a sign that something in your life needs to change. If you're someone that stays up late night after night, knowing very well that it's going to make you miserable the next day, then this video is for you. In today's video, I'm going to talk about why so many of us are sleep deprived, how sleep deprivation affects your body in more ways than you might think, and how to get yourself on a healthier path. First, let's talk about why we do this. In part, it's not your fault. Society has all of us messed up. The term bedtime procrastination was used as far back as 2014 in this article. Bedtime procrastination is defined as failing to go to bed at the intended time while no external circumstances prevent a person from doing so. Procrastination is nothing new, nor is bedtime procrastination. However, in this new age of social media, people have come up with a new way to describe what has likely been going on since the invention of artificial indoor lighting. Revenge bedtime procrastination. Revenge bedtime procrastination. Revenge bedtime procrastination. Revenge bedtime procrastination. The term apparently originated in China, which will make more sense later on in this video. This Reddit post of a screenshot from Twitter defines revenge bedtime procrastination as a phenomenon in which people who don't have much control over their daytime life refuse to sleep early in order to regain some sense of freedom during late night hours. Beyond just wanting to be up, there's this feeling that you're giving yourself back something that was taken away from you during the day. Life is full of choices, but we all know that some of those choices are non-negotiable if you want to have a roof over your head and not starve. The main non-negotiable, unless you were born into a wealthy family or married into one, is that you have to work to survive. For many of us, that means trading 40 hours of our time every week for money. Of course, it's not uncommon for the work week to extend even beyond 40 hours for a lot of people. In China, there is a work schedule known as 996, which means that people are expected to work from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. six days a week. There is a really good documentary on this topic from Vice News, and I'll link it in the description box. But in essence, many tech companies are pushing people to work this schedule or face being replaced by someone else who's willing to do so. With a work schedule that limits your time so radically, it makes sense that staying up late and scrolling on your phone turns into an attractive option. The tech industry in China isn't the only sector where people are overworked. I recommend this documentary by ABC News, which discusses overwork in South Korea. Near the beginning, a delivery driver's work schedule is described as being 14 hours a day or 70 hours per week. According to this report, drivers are only paid for parcels that are delivered and must sort through parcels for hours before their shift unpaid before they can even get on the road. Workers have reportedly died from being forced to perform under this work structure. Death by overwork even has a word in the Korean language. Guarosa. Don't trust my pronunciation on this, just watch the documentary. Even if you aren't being asked to work exorbitant hours, having a job where the work conditions are very stressful or unpredictable, or you're regularly asked to do the work of two to three people can make you feel overwhelmed and burnt out. This is the case for many workers right here in the United States too. This piece on the challenges of one day shipping focuses on Amazon delivery drivers who have reported being attacked on delivery routes by animals and people, staying after hours to finish delivering packages, and famously, not having time to even use the bathroom. Now, that was kind of a long segue into toxic work culture, but the take home message is this. If you're working a job that leaves you feeling burnt out at the end of the day, to the extent that you only have the mental capacity to lay in bed on scroll on your phone or binge watch Netflix, that's not a sign that you're flawed. That's a sign that something in your life needs to change. If your circumstances are not conducive to proper sleep, then you might want to think about changing your circumstances. Easier said than done, I know, but it's something to think about. Okay, now it's accountability time. Sometimes it's not a matter of working too much or any other external factor. Sometimes it's just that you know you need to go to sleep and you don't do it. In this case, you are the problem. We all have our bad habits that we know how to fix yet do not fix and sleep is no exception. I'm guilty of this myself sometimes and the main thing that keeps me up at night when I do stay up past my bedtime is watching Netflix. That's why if I see a show has 10 seasons and 60 episodes a season, I won't even start it because I'd rather not deal with that temptation. The reality is that once you reach adulthood, you have to pay 
parent yourself. You have to tell yourself to do the things that the people who helped to raise you kind of had to force you to do when you were a child. Eat your vegetables so that you aren't constipated for days, clean up after yourself so you don't end up living in chaos, and go to sleep on time so you aren't a zombie the next day. If you're having trouble developing a solid sleep routine, I'm going to discuss solutions towards the end of the video. Next, I'm going to talk about the specific harms that sleep deprivation causes to our bodies. Perhaps learning about the negative consequences of this bad habit on your body, the one body that you get to navigate this life with, will serve as motivation. All right, let's get into it. To start, how many hours of sleep do we truly need? Do these hours change over time, over the course of the lifespan? And what happens if we don't get enough sleep? The American Academy of Sleep Medicine and the Sleep Research Society recommends that adults get seven or more hours per night of sleep. For the parents out there, look closely at this table. Teenagers are recommended to get eight to 10 hours and the recommended hours of rest only go up from there for younger kids. If your kids are staying up late at night watching TV with you, then they're being even more sleep deprived, which is not good for their development. When we don't get enough sleep, our bodies do make us pay the consequences. In the short term, not being well rested can put you in a bad mood, make you less productive at work, and make it more likely that you get into a car accident. The long-term effects are also something that you should be aware of. Sleeping for less than seven hours a night has been linked to a higher risk for developing chronic diseases such as high blood pressure, heart disease, diabetes, obesity, anxiety, and depression. Let's talk more about the connection between sleep and obesity. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, or CDC, here in the United States, over 40% of adults are obese. The percent of adults in this country struggling with their weight is on the rise. There's a lot of talk about making sure that you exercise and eat healthy to maintain a healthy weight, but there's another factor that does not get a lot of attention sleep. Sleep deprivation is associated with having a higher BMI or body mass index, gaining weight, and being obese. Sleep deprivation contributes to weight gain by changing our physiology in ways that make us more likely to overeat. In this study, a group of young men were given the same meals every day in order to make sure that everyone was getting the same nutrition across the board. After six days of sleeping for just four hours a night, the men reported feeling hungrier and having a greater appetite for food. What's more is that the researchers were able to measure higher levels of the hormone ghrelin and lower levels of the hormone leptin in their blood. Ghrelin is like a gremlin hormone that makes you want to eat and eat and eat, and leptin has the reverse effect. Lack of sleep literally changes your biochemistry to turn you into an insatiable version of yourself. Sleep depth can also reduce your glucose tolerance, which is a measure of how effectively your body can clear sugar from the bloodstream. Under normal circumstances, you eat a meal with carbohydrates or carbs in it, your blood sugar goes up, your pancreas reduces insulin, which helps that sugar to get into your cells to be used for energy, and then your blood sugar goes back to normal. When you're sleep deprived, that whole process goes awry and your blood sugar stays high. And do you know what condition is characterized by this exact problem with blood sugar? Type 2 diabetes. Our cardiovascular systems also suffer when we choose Netflix over going to bed. Lack of sleep increases your risk for clogged arteries, also known as atherosclerosis, indirectly by reducing insulin sensitivity, making it harder for your body to metabolize sugar, and raising blood pressure. Not dedicating enough time to sleep can also put your body into an inflammatory state. That's what was found in this study, where subjects' sleep was restricted to six hours per night for just 12 nights. Both inflammatory markers, tumor necrosis factor, or TNF-alpha, and interleukin IL-6, were higher as a consequence of sleep deprivation. This can translate to you having a weaker immune system and being more likely to get sick. Poor sleep also has another weird side effect. It causes an imbalance in the bacteria that live in your intestines, otherwise known as the gut microbiome. Fascinating, right? Everything in life follows cycles. The moon, the rotation of the earth, our bodies, and even the tiny microscopic creatures that live inside of our bodies. When we don't follow a proper sleep-wake cycle, we throw them off too. This results in gut dysbiosis and bacterial overgrowth, and some of these bacteria have even been shown to produce chemicals that induce fatigue, telling us to go to sleep. 
And you know, it's fun to wonder who's actually in charge, our minds or the over 100 trillion bacteria that live in our gut that can apparently tell us when it's bedtime. Lastly, we know that people who don't get enough sleep have a harder time concentrating, remembering things, and dedicating time to hobbies. And what's a life without doing fun things, right? So I think it's fair to say that sleep deprivation is serious enough to be considered a public health issue. In June of 2023, the CDC published this research brief on the prevalence of poor sleep patterns in which they found that 33% of adults reported sleeping for less than seven hours per night. Black people and native Hawaiian Pacific Islanders were the racial demographics with the poorest sleep quality. When we look at income, we see that those with lower household incomes reported sleeping less. So it can be said that money doesn't just buy happiness, it also helps you to sleep better at night. And this all ties back into my earlier segue on toxic work culture and how that can contribute to sleep deprivation. It's only logical that if you have to work exorbitant hours, are not given fair compensation, and perhaps cannot afford a car so you have to take public transport, which makes your commute longer, that you're gonna end up caught in a cycle of not sleeping enough. Okay, so by now you have a pretty solid understanding of why your body needs adequate rest. Now let's talk about how to develop better sleep habits. The first thing that you wanna start with is why? Why do you want to develop better sleep habits? As Viktor Frankl said, those who have a why to live can bear almost any how. Once you have a solid reason for wanting to sleep better, you are going to find a way. Trust me. For me, my motivation is that I want to be my best self. I've gone through periods of insomnia where I was taking melatonin every night. I've gone through periods where I stayed up late for no good reason. And I know how terrible I would feel the next day. I know how awful I felt. And I know too that I was not the best version of myself. Tired me is impatient, unfocused, barely able to form sentences. That's not the me that I want to bring to the world. To be my kindest, happiest and most productive self, I know that I have to sleep at least eight hours a night. And remember too that the goal is not to be perfect. If you stay up late here and there, that's fine. The goal is to have a good sleep pattern where on most nights you're getting enough sleep. All right, the next step is to come up with one habit that will get you closer to your goal. Just one. It could be setting an alarm to remind you of your goal each night, canceling one of your streaming subscriptions, or doing yoga or some other relaxing activity before bed. The key is just to start and your body will adapt over time. Here's another thought. Part of the appeal of staying up late is that you get to have fun after a whole day of being a serious working adult. If this applies to you, then it might be helpful to consider ways to insert more fun into your day so you aren't searching for it or yearning for it at the end of the day when you're supposed to be resting and recovering. If you have the time to add a new hobby or revisit an old one that you abandoned, that could be a way to add joy to your life. Social connection can also be a great source of joy. When was the last time you hung out with friends and family? Even if you only have time for a 15 minute phone call, something is better than nothing. Going back to the topic of work, if you're in a toxic work situation, start applying for other jobs. For those of you who have a job that you're fairly content with, where you're good at it, it helps you to pay the bills, and you feel like you're contributing to the betterment of the world, yet you still engage in revenge bedtime procrastination, try this mindset shift. Instead of thinking that you have to work, try to change your perspective to you get to work. I know that for a lot of people, this is not gonna resonate, but trust me, it works. Even if it is a little delulu, as the kids say, it's a better mindset to have than one of bitterness and resentment five days a week. That's most of your life right there. Working too much is obviously not a good thing, but working to earn the life that you want to live is. Anyway, that's all for today. Take care.